Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We are excited what God is doing this very hour. And, um, and I'm just looking forward to what God's got available. Praise God. And so we, uh, amen. Yes, sis. Praise God. Offerings just keep coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much, church. Thank you so much. Uh, I know they're going to be very appreciative of this. Uh, she, is, she really is not really expecting any of this, and this is going to be a big surprise for them. And, uh, you know, stuff like this builds our faith. It builds each and every one of our faiths. And so, amen, we, uh, we just want to continue to lift them up in prayer, keep the Valdez family uh, in prayer tonight. I hate that they're going to be driving this late because I don't believe in driving late. Amen. But uh, they are driving late to Gallup. Um, so just keep them in prayer. We'll be praying for them for their safety. Amen. That the Lord would dispatch angels. Amen. To protect them as they drive with their family. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Sister Espy, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Sister Espy got a brand new King James Bible today. Praise God. Amen. She got, a, she got her sword. Praise God. So good. We love you, Sister Espy. Praise God. Amen. The book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel tonight. Amen. I'm going to do a little bit of something different tonight. Never preached this. I've preached this several times. You know, and Brother Clyde, you might relate to this. You've ever preached anything in the word of God and God just gives you a fresh raiment in this word every time you look at it it's like whoa that's something new i would never seen that before but I've preached over it so many times and so I really feel like God's uh, given me a, a revelation on something here that I felt that is the will of God for tonight in the direction that God wants to go so if you have your Bibles, first Samuel chapter number 17, we're going to read out of two chapters tonight. I'm not going to be very lengthy. I promise you I won't. But first Samuel chapter number 17, when you get there, please say amen. And starting in verse number 47, in all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword, saveth not with sword and spear. Everybody say that together. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Amen. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you unto our hands, our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But There was no sword. Check this out. There was no sword in the hand of David. This is not going to be a Sunday school David and Goliath teaching. This is going to be a revelation of what God gave the pastor in this particular service. But I want you to skip over to verse or chapter number 25, if you would, real quick. Chapter number 25, we're going to fast forward to David's life here. Praise God. Amen. Starting in verse number 13, David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. New Testament would say, David said, Get everybody up and get your swords in your hands. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword, and there went up after David about 400 men and 
hundred abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not uh, we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them. And when we were in the fields, they were a wall unto us both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now check this out. Now therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. For just a few minutes, I want to, a few moments, I want to preach on this thought. Let go and let God fight your battle. Learn to let go and let God fight fight your battle. Let's put our Bibles down one more time and let's lift up our hands and let's allow the Holy Ghost to do what he wants in this service. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. We praise your wonderful name. Hallelujah. We ask you, God, that you would be in the midst of this service, God. Allow us to be receptive to your word. Amen. And a doer, not just a hearer, God. Amen. And uh, touch our hearts and our minds tonight, Jesus. Amen. As uh, we hear in your word tonight, by your precious, wonderful name, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise before we're seated. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do, what you are doing in this very hour. You can be seated tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. In the work of God, there's always going to be a lot of challenges. Would you agree with that tonight? There's going to be a lot of battles in this day and time, and uh, I don't believe that we will ever reach a point till the Lord comes where, amen, we have the liberty to just coast through life or coast through the work of God. Just don't think it's going to be like that. As long as there is sin, folks, listen to me, as long as there is sin in the world and there is a devil in the world, there's going to be sinners and there's going to be devilish people surrounding you every single day. So we're always going to have problems, praise God, with fight against uh, spirits. And uh, there's going to always be people in our lives that will aggregate, aggravate us or uh, disturb us, get on our nerves and stuff like that. I saw something on Facebook not too long ago of a preacher talking about uh, Saul and David and how much they said Saul is this and Saul is that. Well, you know what? If it was not for Saul, David would not be who David was. David needed a Saul in his life to be the man who he became. You need the Sauls in your life to be the person who God wants you to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're always going to have to fight, amen, with false doctrine challenges. Amen. Financial giants. Amen. Family problems and opposition from without and even opposition from within. Hallelujah. And as individuals, all of us are going to have people that are placed in life, amen, in our lives, either by God or the devil. There's going to be people placed in our life that are going to be very, 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 very difficult to deal with. Would you agree with that? Praise God. All of us are going to have a Nabal in our life. We are. We're going to have a Nabal, amen, in our life. And we're, we're going to have to face a Goliath at some time. Praise God in life. And, and, and I think that it's very important that when we have either a Goliath or a Nabal that is defying us, remember this, church, we have to learn whose battle we're wanting to fight. Praise God. I know I'm going to get somewhere with this because this made so much sense to me and God opened it up. But because sometimes God calls us as human beings 
praise God, to fight his battle. And there, uh, other times we are feeling the urge to fight, but we're not fighting his battle because it's our battle. Does that make any sense? And there's a difference, listen folks, there's a huge difference between fighting God's battle and fighting our battle. I'm gonna show you something here in just a minute. Sometimes the enemies that I feel like I have on a personal level are not necessarily God's enemies. Praise God. Now, we like to think that if we don't like people, uh, that automatically means God doesn't like them either, but it doesn't even work that way. It doesn't. It doesn't work any, anything like that. In fact, uh, 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 we, feel, we, we think sometimes if, if we wrote them off, then God writes them off, and that's just not how it works, folks. It doesn't work anything like that. And so we, we got to have a discernment to know the difference between fighting God's battle and fighting our battle. Praise God. Now, Goliath was uh, a well-known figure. Everybody knows who he is in the Old Testament. He's a Philistine of Gath. Uh, he is from uh, the time he was a child. He was trained to fight. He was trained to kill. And I personally believe he was very, uh, very ugly, just not someone probably good-looking to have around, uh, you know, probably with uncombed, dirty uh, puffy hair. He had a beard that was probably natted and his breath stank so bad it would burn people's eyes when he came near them. I mean, he was just a bad individual. If you read about him, he was a dirty mess. He got a 13 foot bed and, and, and the guy was horrible, just horrible the way he was. And, 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 and he did have this huge suit of armor and his spear was like a weaver's beam. Uh, Goliath was a bully Amen. A mean bully, and everybody was afraid of Goliath. Everybody was afraid of him. I remember I was in sixth grade, and I remember walking home with some buddies, and I saw this big, fat, black kid just beating up a kid. And I remember looking at him, and I'm a second grader, and he's a second grader, but this kid is thick. And I'm thinking, I'm like, who is that guy? They're like, oh, that's what's his name, man. No one messes with him. He'll beat you up if you look at him. And I was like, I remember passing by him one time in class in school, and I thought he was going to beat me up. And I was like, <sighs> like I was all afraid. I was like, I was so scared. I was like, whoa, that dude's huge. So I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be scared. So Goliath, he comes, and he's the number one man who comes to fight Israel. And we know the story how he stood there and he challenged the army of Israel, amen, uh, to find one man, any man to come out and fight him. We know that Israel was very afraid to stand up to Goliath, amen. As a, a man nine and a half feet tall, uh, he was very intimidating. Nobody wanted to mess with him. Nobody wanted to challenge him because this was a bad dude. But here comes David. A 17-year-old kid, he hears about this uncircumcised Philistine challenging God's army. He says, so who is this? This man who comes and thinks he can defy God's army. So there was something about Goliath and the spiritual wicked force that was behind him. David picked up on that man who uh, he, 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 he was, and David overstood that. Uh, that there was uh, there was an agenda behind Goliath. And David, who was just 17 years old, 17 years old, he was a lover of God. He loved God, a lover of truth, a lover of righteousness. And something began to turn in David's spirit, and he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine, amen, uh, that he would, he, he would have the courage to defy the armies of the living God? And we know the story how David told Saul, amen, I don't want your armor. I don't want your spear. Amen, I don't want your sword. He said, just give me a shepherd's sling and a shepherd's staff. 
And so he gets this sling and he goes out there, amen, with just one stone in the sling and runs just to see how he uh, just whirled that sling around and around. And, and we all know, know the story. And, uh, uh, and he's, he's throwing that thing around and around. And here comes Goliath and he's looking at this kid and he's probably scratching his head. Well, my God, I'm nine and a half feet. And this dude's like only five foot, maybe five ten. Just 17 year old kid. Why is he? What's he think? What does he have? You know, like you would trip out if a little midget wanted to fight you, or some little kid, kind of like a like a Chihuahua dog. They're not afraid of anybody. They'll they'll go after anybody. They'll tear your knee. They'll tear your ankles up. But praise God. And David took that sling and slung that stone, and the Bible says it sunk right into his forehead, into his forehead. And it toppled Goliath, and he prevailed against him with just a sling and a stone. I think reading this, there's a message of David and Goliath. It's simply this. When you're in a battle, and it's God's battle, you have a guaranteed outcome in this battle. God's battle, how many, how many times you ever watch a fight, a match, and you're like, oh, I'm going for this guy, man. I hope he beats this guy. And then the other guy wins, and you get mad, and you're like, oh, that was rigged. Oh, they paid him off. Let me tell you something about God's battle. God's battles are rigged. Yeah, they're fixed. God fixes his battles up. He know, he, in fact, he knows he's going to win before he steps into the octagon. He knows he's going to beat Whoever is in his way, it's a fixed fight already. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how tall your giant is. It doesn't matter how intimidating he looks. Amen. If it's God's will for that giant to fall, God needs, all God needs is an available David. That's all God needs. That's all, he, that's, that's all he needs. And when you're fighting the battle, amen, of God, you always prevail even when the odds are stacked up against you and it doesn't even seem like you're going to win. You're like, oh, my Lord, this is going to hurt. No, it's not because you're in God's hands. The Bible says he measures the seas by the palm of his hands. He's a big God. I don't know any of you that can measure the seas with just the palm of your hand, but my Jesus is. My Jesus can't because he's that big. He's a big God. Amen. When you're fighting God's battle, you don't need man's weapons. You don't have to fear the outcome because the God we serve has never, ever lost a battle in his life. He prevails every single time. Every single time he prevails. Some of us act like we're not even on the winning team. We act like we're on the losing team and we don't know how we're going to get through life. We don't know how it's going to... We don't know what's going to happen to us. We, we get so much in a bind that we don't know what we're going to do. And you know what we do? We try to come up with this thing called an option. And we try to figure out a solution for ourselves. And we begin to forget what God does and forget what Jesus is available, how he can fix things. And we start to, to analyze and, and, and try to compromise in our own human logic thinking and try to figure it out on our own. When all the while God is saying, you forgot that I parted the Red Sea. You forgot that I made a king turn over your people. You forgot that I healed the blind. Amen. That I healed the sick. You forgot the things that I did in the word of God. And then we get so caught up. We're just like, I've got so much I've got so much debt that's on my back. I've got so much stuff on my back. It's like when you've got so much and you're carrying the burden and you just cannot Pick yourself in him up. You know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like, folks. This is exactly what it's like. You're like this. I, I, I can't do it. I got debt that I got to pay. I've got rent coming up. I've got stuff for my... Now, well, now the wife thing is my own thing. So I've got, I've got all this stuff. I, I just don't know how I'm going to figure it out. 
I don't know how I'm going to do it. And, and you get so dragged down and it boggles you down and, and to the point where God said, do you remember, amen, when you believed that time, when you were alone with me, your faith, amen, was unstoppable, amen, all the times you gave your battles to me, the reason why you lose a lot of battles is because you fight on your own, you've got to give God the battle, stop fighting the battle and let go and let God take control. Give everything to God. That's all you got to do. I'll tell you what the biggest battle in Las Vegas is. Finances. It's money. That's the biggest battle. And you know what the devil does? He pokes at the biggest battle. He does. Oh, man, they're in debt. We're going to work on debt. Now, my wife can contest this. You know what the biggest battle is in Louisiana? Adultery. And the devil works on it. Day and night. Oh, people make good money down there. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. My brother-in-law makes 250000 a year in the oil fields. They make good money. But there's a spirit called of adultery. And it's bad. And the devil pushes. And he brags. And he gets on them. And he stomps. And he pounds. And he does everything. And you know what? That's the same thing that he does in your weaknesses. He knows if you've got bills that you don't know how you're going to pay, he knows the reason why, listen to me, folks, this is from the Holy Ghost right here, the reason why the devil attacks your finances so bad is because he knows the power that's in your mouth. Amen. He knows exactly what you're capable of. He knows that, hey, I know they don't have a job that they can pay for all this and that, but I know that they've got something inside of them that's more powerful than what I've got. Amen. The Bible says that the devil is the prince of the air. Amen. That's all he's a prince. Of, but you know what the Bible says about a child of God? It says you are an overcomer of all things above and below and beyond. There's no outsmarting, no outtaking what God can do. If somebody grabbed the revelation of it and said, you know what? I know I've got the Holy. There's enough power in your mouth to speak it. If you're able to speak it, God will prevail it. All you got to do is speak the word. God, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay this. I'll tell you how you're going to pay it. You're going to stand on the word of God, and you're going to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority, God. You've given me the power. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know how we're going to make this happen. I know how you're going to open up your mouth, and you're going to speak the words. God, I'm going to let go because this is your battle. I ain't going to fight, God. I'm going to let you fight. I'm going to let you take control. Hallelujah. But some battles now are not Goliath. Listen, folks. This is where I saw this. They're Nabal's battles. You're like thinking, what? That's weird. Yeah. Hallelujah. We move up ahead in time, just a few short years later in the Bible, and the same man who toppled the giant with the sling and a stone, amen, who did not have a sword when he fought Goliath, amen, now he's out in the wilderness, him and his men, they're, they're hungry, and they sent a man to Nabal and, and asked uh, Nabal to give us a little bit of food to eat. Hey, Nabal, we need uh, some food. We're dying over here. Amen, we're in the cold, and, and uh, uh, we need something to eat. Uh, and now for perspective, Nabal was a wealthy man. Uh, he, he had a lot of money and a lot of farming or um, a lot of food, and uh, uh, Nabal could have fed David and all the men and uh, with him and never known that there was anything missing because he had enough, the Bible says, to fill an army. Hallelujah. But he was a man that wanted to give you nothing but a hard time. Just for the sake of giving you a hard time. I read about Nabal. I would rather fight Goliath than a dude like Nabal. You know why? Because Nabal ain't nothing more disgusting than a rich 
spoiled, good for nothing man who will not give a penny to anything but himself. But I'd rather fight a soldier who's willing to get down and dirty for what he believes in because Nabal didn't have nothing to believe in other than himself. He was right all the time. Amen. But Nabal, the Bible talks about him. He had a, was a man always spoke in a rough, a brook cutting tone with people, cut him down. I knew some people like that. Nabal was a man that you could not reason with. He was a man that no matter what side of the argument you were on, he always believed he was right. Just like my wife. No, I'm just kidding. I'm playing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all don't say nothing. She ain't even here. Praise God. <laughs> he was a man so full of pride. Check this out. He was a man full of pride and full of himself that he could never say the words, I'm sorry, I apologize, I, I made a mistake. He could never admit he was wrong, let alone say it, and, and, and he wanted you to look like a fool and an idiot at all times. He, he, he was just rude. Nabal was a horrible, a horrible, and I mean a horrible man. Uh, he had little, uh, what I call little man syndrome, where they think they 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 tough but really they're not they just blame everybody for their mistakes a a amen and and uh, uh literally believe that everybody in the world was out to get him and out to get his money and all this stuff and so Nabal when he was asked for some food Nabal says who is this David who 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 is David they're like hey we want some food David had asked us if we can come by and get some enchiladas and some uh some you know whatever and uh, he's like, who is this David? Who? I don't, I don't know a David. Who? And we think, well, we read that, and I read that, and I thought, well, maybe he just, he doesn't remember. He's, he, you know, he's old. He, he just, he doesn't, he, he's got a memory problem. But, but here, check this out. The next question is, who is the son of Jesse? Who's the son of Jesse? And that lets us know, folks, that Nabal knew exactly who they were talking about. He knew exactly what they were saying. When I read that, I thought, here's a man with nothing but pride. Here's a man that all he thinks of himself. Amen. And, uh, and so and so many words. Nabal said, David is a nobody. He's a nobody. He's just a worthless man begging for food. And guess what? I ain't going to help that man. I'm not going to help him. And when David gets word back that Nabal wasn't going to help him, all these emotions begin to stir in David's spirit. Listen to me, folks. And even begins to think, you know, there, uh, here me and my men, uh, we have been on the wall uh, to Nabal. We protected him, amen, from thieves that he never knew even existed because we stood at his gate protecting him. And we're, and we're done nothing but good to this man. And this is how he repays our, our goodness by insults. He refuses to help us in a time of distress. It would be so easy for Nabal to help us, but look how he is. David just thought how wicked, how rude Nabal was. And the more he thought they were sleeping out in the cold while he's up in there in his warm estate, in his barns, and, and he's got his food, and he's got his wealth. Uh, amen. Here David and his men are huddled around the campfire. They're hungry, and David begins to think Nabal wouldn't even uh, have his wealth and have his barns uh, if it wasn't for us uh, standing guard out in front of the wilderness. Uh, but he wants to insult us like this. It doesn't make sense. And I'm an anointed man. And I'm fixed, and I'm king of Israel, and I'm this and that, and he can't even give me the decency of a little bit of respect. Decency. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. At this point, when you read in this, fury starts to sink in David's heart, boil inside of David. 
And so he grabbed his sword. The Bible says, amen. He grabbed his sword and says, I'm going to chop this dude's head off. And he looks at his men and says, I need about 400 of you men to come with me and pick up your swords. He says, we're going to attack this dude. We're going to, we're, we're, we're going to go to Nabal and we're going to take care of some business. We're going to kill this guy, amen, because he's sitting there in his high estates and he's not even helping us. And so here they go. Here's the giant killer. Here's the man that prevailed over Goliath with a slingshot, amen, but now he's got a sword, amen, and now he's not by himself. He's got 400 men that are with him. And now he's facing, a, he's not even facing a giant at this time, folks. He's not even going towards a giant. Amen. He's facing a stubborn, old, weak man who's got one foot on the banana peel, the other on the, on the grave. A dude who's fixing to, to, to lie in eternity. And David's up there. He's full of fury. Let me tell you, that was an indication right there of whose battle David was fixing to fight. Listen to me, folks. This is a separate battle. You got to understand, this battle that David dispatched 400 men to go with him, this was not God's battle. This was David's battle. David's battle. When he was fighting God's battle, when he, David was fighting God's battle, all he needed was a slingshot. That's all he needed. Just a slingshot and a stone. And you can do the job. Amen. Amen. All he needed was to be in the right spirit, and he prevailed for doing it. But now he's about to fight his own battle. This time, it's not God's vendetta. It's David's vendetta. This is David's doing, not God's doing. Amen. And uh, he, he's got all these swords and all of these men. Amen. And, and, and he's got them all together. Yeah, they're, they're ready to fight, and they're, shh, shh, you can hear the swords and stuff like that. You know, when I remember as a young kid, I was, you know, I wasn't raised in church, raised in church of course, y'all know that, but I remember when I used to tag bang at 13, 14 years old, 15, uh, we, we, we were getting in this fight one time with this other group, this other, these other guys across town, and uh, my brother-in-law, or not my brother-in-law, my, uh, my, my cousin's boyfriend came to the house. We're all sitting down. He comes in the house. He's like, oh. <gasps> he's oh man, uh, uh, these guys are chasing me, and 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 he says there's two of them. They had a screwdriver, and they were all getting crazy and stuff. And so we got all we got all crazy too. We're like, he's and, and I, Rocky got on the phone. He's like, call up the guys, and, and they're all calling up everybody. And by the time the fight broke out, there was literally like sixty or seventy people all fighting together out in the yard. You can even ask this my mom. Ask my mom about this because my mom was in the middle of that fight. She had a butcher knife and she was swinging it at the guys. Because they came in the house and they were chasing and they were trying to beat us up. And one, I was rolling on the ground. My sister was fighting one. My friends, it just became a mess. By the time cops showed up, it was three hours later. No, really, ask my mom. If you ever see my mom, hey, by the way, my mom's coming back to church. She gave me a call. She says, I want to come back to church. I want the Holy Ghost again, son. I was excited about that. Don't give up on your, your loved ones. When you see her, she's coming back to Vegas. She say, hey, go to her and tell her this. Did you... Uh, get in a gang fight with your son when he was 14 years old and chased some people with the butcher knife? And she's going to laugh. She says, oh, yeah. Viva la raza por vida canal. She was crazy, though. But that, that's exactly how it was, even with David's situation. And, and so David's taking all these people with him, and we're going to fight. We're going to do everything we can. And, and you don't think right uh, when you try and retaliate against somebody that does you wrong. It doesn't go in your mind right. You, you, you start uh, in someone who insults you or who has cut you. You want to do harm back to them. You want to do whatever you can to get them back. Amen. I'm going to tell you something tonight, folks. Someone needs to put the sword down. And someone needs to pick up the slingshot of God and say, God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm not going to trust in my own my own ways I'm going to trust in you because when you're carnal minded you can never get to where God wants you to get to it doesn't work you know why because the Bible says this vengeance 
is mine, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine. Quit trying to plot or plan, amen, you're going to make it, amen. Just quit trying to figure things out and God, uh, uh, you're not answering so I guess I'm going to have to go and do this myself. Don't try to figure that out. You know what the Bible says? Stand still and hear the voice, hear the salvation of the Lord. All you have to do is have faith in God and let go and give the battle to God and say, God, this is your fight. It's not my fight. This is your fight, God. I'm not talk, I'm talking about any fight. I'm talking about a financial Goliath fight. I'm talking about a heroin addiction fight. I'm talking about an addict fight. Whatever you're fighting in your life, you don't have to fight anymore. Stop fighting. Stop picking up those swords. Lay them down and say, God, here I am. I'm the biggest one in the world, God. You're a big God. I don't need a sword to fight. Give it all to God. Hallelujah. There's the interesting thing about this story. David, on his way up there to kill this old guy. David's like 400 men. David wasn't thinking right. You know who stopped David in his tracks? Abigail. Everybody knows who Abigail is. If you don't, she's the nicest, the sweetest person in the world. Now, I try to figure this out because I read it, and I was thinking, okay, God, whoa, hold on. How does a beautiful, spirited Princess Diane type of woman marry a stubborn, old, mess, mean, naval guy? You ever, fig- you ever thought about that? I read that today. I was like, whoa, that don't make sense. How do they? Hey, opposites attract. Look at my wife and I. She's the better person. I'm the bad. I'm the worst one. She's the better looking one. I'm the ugly one. Praise God. But I, I saw that, and I was thinking, this is so weird. And Abigail stops David in his tracks. Hold on, Dave. She does this. She says, look. She says, you're about to make a big mistake. You're going to take all these men. Abigail knows his past. She says, you, 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 she looks over his shoulder. She says, you're going to take 400 guys to kill one schmo? One old dude? My husband? And, and he thought about it. He stepped back and thought about it and says, well, uh, I guess I never really thought about it that way. She says, look, she reminded him this. She says, you have to remember where God's brought you from. God took you out and God placed you. You fought a giant with just a slingshot. But you're going to take swords to one old man who's fixing to pass away. Mean-spirited man, I understand. I've been married to him for 65 years. I know everything about him, David. You got to chill out. And, she's, and she's, she's reasoning with David at this time. She's telling him, David, calm down. And, and, and that's why the scripture says this. That's why the writer says, trust in the Lord. Lean not to thine own understanding, but acknowledge him and he, what? Will direct thy paths. When we're undirected, we go wild and haystack and we'll start doing whatever we can to make our findings and, and say, you whatever pleases the flesh, but, but if you can stop and trust God and say, God, I'm going to lean on you, I'm going to think on you, I'm going to prowl on you, I'm going to do everything on you. If somebody slaps your face, turn them around and give them the other face to smack. If somebody steals your stuff, turn around and give them your coat. If somebody robs you blind, Give them your rest of your I'm telling you right now That is a revival spirit You can't have revival When you're too much of yourself It's not going to happen It's only going to happen when you're said When you've got this song in your heart You know this world is not my home I'm just a passing through And my Treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. When you die and you go to heaven, you ain't going to take your Jordans with you. 
You ain't going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers with you. You ain't going to take your PS4 with you. Your car ain't going with you and your house is surely ain't going with you and your degree is not going with you. The only thing that's going to go to heaven is your soul. That's the only thing that matters right now is us, God. So why carry all these burdens? Why carry all these burdens? Why? And just say, you know what, God? I'm going to let go and I'm going to let you take control. I'm going to give you my heart. I'm going to get my sword out and I'm going to drop my sword. I'm going to take off my walls. I'm just going to take off my handmaiden garment and I'm going to worship freely. Amen. I'm going to give it all to you, God. I'm not going to worry no more. Hallelujah. I've got bills coming up, God. But you know what? You said trust in you. Amen. You said to give everything to you. And I'm going to trust you, God. Amen. I've got all the situations coming up, God. But I'm going to walk in faith, not by sight. I'm going to do everything that the word of God says. And that is to trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, folks. Someone, let's all stand. Someone needs to back out of the fight. Back out of your fight tonight. Back out of the fight that Satan's soul wants you to get involved in. That he wants you to get carnal. He wants you to lose. He knows the battle. He knows the fights. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, no music tonight, sis. We're not going to have no music tonight. We're all going to pray together as a church. We're going to pray together as one tonight. Hallelujah. Just our voices with God. There's enough angels that's filling this place right now that's got enough music tone in the spirit realm with God. Amen. And the only thing the angels cannot do, what we can do, amen, is to, is to reach out the way we are to God and to worship him like we do. Amen. That's one thing the angels are jealous of us. Uh, amen. The, the music is already playing right now in the spirit realm. It's already going. The melody, God's melody is already playing right now. The only thing is missing is God's people, the souls, uh, amen, that worship and cry to Jesus tonight. Say, God, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go of everything. I'm going to let go and I'm going to give you my battle. Wherever your battle is tonight, I want you to take it to this altar. I want you to come on up and lay down your sword. And I want you to say, God, here I am, God. I'm going to give you my battle. I'm going to give you my cries. I'm going to give you my warfare. I'm going to give you everything that I fought myself with, God. And God says, Dick. That's it. I just need you. That's all I need. I just need you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Come on. Somebody needs to cry out to him tonight. It's not a time to fear the tactics of Satan. It's a time, hey, man, to fear God and say, God, here, here, here's my life. Here's everything. Here's my battles. Here, here's everything, God. It's, it's not a time to fight one another. Hey, man, there's a lost and dying world out there that we've got to save. Hallelujah. I don't have time to fight with my neighbor. I don't have time to go to hell for anybody or anything, God. I don't have time to do that. All I have time to do, God, is to trust in you. Here's my battle, God. Here's my battle. Give him your battle tonight. Give him your battle tonight. Come on, lift up your voices. Come on, that's it. Lift up your voices. Allow the Holy Ghost to do a work in this place. God wants to, God's, God's trying to pry. He's trying to pry the sword from somebody's hand tonight. God's trying to pull that sword of option, amen, out of your hands. God's trying to tell you, I'm here, I'm right here. I've been here all along. I need you to trust in me. I need you to put your trust one more time, amen. You've been running out of options, and that's what I've been trying to do. That's it, cry out to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, 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 God. That's it. Go ahead, Brother Bob. Go ahead, Brother Bob. Go ahead, Brother Bob. God loves you. 
Jesus. God, I reclaim the faith one more time. I claim the faith and victory in my family one more time. Let the praises of my mouth, amen, be acceptable in the sight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to let go. Somebody needs to let go right now. Let go of the sword. Let go of the sword. Come on. Jesus. Jesus' name.